All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I am delighted to be joined by Meredith Callagher, who is in Miami, Florida. How are you doing, Meredith? Great. Thanks for having me, John. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And um, and Meredith is, uh, you know, creates big value for business owners by connecting them with their ideal customers and clients and using creative, strategic and authentic digital advertisements, advertisements or advertisements, depending on how you want to pronounce it. Uh, and today we're going to talk about the Facebook and Instagram ad strategy that is working right now. And I think it's a great subject because, to be honest, Meredith, a lot of people start to get into Facebook ads or into Instagram ads because they feel like, they should be doing them as opposed to strategically approaching them. And then they do them kind of half-hearted because they don't really know how to do it properly. Right. Right. And um, I, I want to touch on that and also why it's important that we're talking about this now is there've been some huge changes at Facebook because in response to Apple's latest update, which was iOS 14, mm. um, which um, Apple was you know, working to make consumers happy and updated all their privacy rules, which really threw a wrench into Facebook advertising or face. Mm -hmm. When I say Facebook, most people that are listening know, right. But I mean, Facebook and Instagram because, um, Facebook owns Instagram and you, you can, you create campaigns for both Facebook and Instagram in yeah. Facebook. So we can agree mm -hmm. going forward though, in the podcast, we'll just call it Facebook ads, but you right. guys were talking about Instagram too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So there were some big changes this year, but I want to go back to something you said before we start talking about the changes is that some people think they should be advertising. Um, cause I probably, because they hear it or see it working well for people, but then they approach it, um, half-heartedly maybe. And okay. Let's talk about who should be advertising yeah. on Facebook, first of all. So what it's not good for because it is it is expensive. So um, people that are getting great results are spending a decent amount of money and then they're making a profit on it. You know, they're making the money back. Yep. But um, if you those people probably already had a really good offer or product. And I don't mean that somebody that's new, it wouldn't be good. I mean, they have a proven offer or product. They've sold it to a bunch of people and I'm using my air quotes to a number mm -hmm. of people where they feel like, yes, people want this. And what the Facebook is really incredible for is like, let's say we sold to 30 people and we can look at those 30 people and find out what their common demographics are. Like maybe most of them are women under the mm -hmm. age of 30 that live in New Hampshire. I don't, you know, like if we can really yeah. dial down to what they are, then we can use Facebook ads to explode that audience. It's really good for targeting and finding, you know, and finding more of the people that love your product. But who I, you guys, if you're, if you've got a new product, I don't advise you going straight to Facebook ads, even mm -hmm. though I know you might know people are doing great with them. It's expensive way because to test the demographics, right? So does that mean? Yeah, no, that that absolutely. And I think that that's great because I think, yeah, I think sometimes people just go in and they go broad immediately and then they spend a lot of money and don't get the results um, because, uh, you know, maybe if they spend a little bit more time on targeting or understanding their 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 uh, ideal audience and all of that, they could save themselves. Because I think sometimes, we, you know, we just we just go broad. And especially often yeah. when people are starting out uh, because they think, well, who's your target audience? Everybody. OK, yeah, that's that's never true. Right. Right. And go ahead. Like so like maybe my friends or clients that are coaches, I'm like, sure, go ahead and offer your coaching service to everybody, but only some of them are going to respond. And then when when you see who they are and you can niche down, you know, then then Facebook ads might be a good tool. And also you want to practice your, um, you know, your sales pitch. Uh, all of these things you can test on Facebook ads manager. It's just, you're going to spend money while you're testing it. So if you can nail down as much of it before you go to business manager, that's the tool that you um, use to create your Facebook ads and pay Facebook business manager. Yeah. If you can nail down your, you know, who it is that's buying from you and your pitch before you go spend money there, it will, you'll, you'll see a bit of profit quicker, you know? Um, yeah. So what are some of the so what are some of the approaches you should use because um you know with Facebook ads and, and with Instagram ads because personally to be honest I find Instagram ads 
completely addictive. I have to resist yeah. myself. I mean, seriously, yeah. I'm I'm like I'm like the perfect person for them because every time I see one, I'm like, oh, this sounds fantastic, and I'm and then I'm like, stop it, stop yourself, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. So, well, and I think one of the reasons that um, I don't know you that you might be on Instagram more, are you? I mean, I find yeah, I'm yeah. on Instagram more. So then yeah, I'm on Instagram we more, see yeah. the ads there. And because of the t- targeting that the business manager, led, I mean, John, they were serving you something that you had told Instagram that you love, like, you know, t- and it was just made just for you. But guess what? If you opt out of the tracking, which is now you have an option as of probably mid-April and depends mm-hmm. on when you um, updated your if you use Apple, your Apple iPhone, you know, now they're saying, do you want to opt out of tracking, which most people are going to say yes, because that sounds scary to be tracked. Guess what? Now you're going to get ads for menopause, women's menopause, I mean, menopause or for children's toys, things on that. I mean, I'm picking things that I don't think. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So that what I was, um, so what I'm seeing working, and this is what we have to remember what's changed now is that um, we can't fit, we can't track people off of Facebook or Facebook if they opt out. And 96% of the people are opting out, but not everybody's updated. I mean, only like 20% of the United States have updated yet. Mm -hmm. But anyway, we're planning for that most people are going to opt out. And I think every ads manager thinks Facebook is going to make more and more changes. But for now, what's best to do is to track people while they're still on the app. So there's a couple of tools. So this is what I want to, this is the strategy I want to tell you about. Excellent. So, and it's not new. These things that we're going to go over aren't new to Facebook business manager. They're just what's working best right now. Um, So there's an objective called video view objective. And what what we do is we ask Facebook and Instagram to go find people that'll watch a video. And, um, and it doesn't cost very much because Facebook used to, they charge more to get people to go off the app. Like if we were asking to Facebook to find people that will give us their email on our landing page or go buy something from us, those ads are expensive, but for two or three cents, literally one, I have one client that got one sense of view. Um, Facebook will find people um, that will watch your video and it, they consider if they've watched it for 15 seconds, um, they call that through play, that that's a good result and it'll cost you about a penny or two. So what you do is you create a video and this is interesting. I, I'm, I'm doing this with every client now actually and seeing um, that um you want to create a video that you think your ideal customer specifically will watch. Let me give you an, and not just a very cool video that anybody would watch. That's the trick because for instance, I have an artist client and she created a really cool like time-lapse video that Mm -hmm. everybody was interested in. It it costs a penny to watch. And so people would watch the whole video through of her creating this beautiful painting. But then when we sent them an ad to purchase one of her paintings, they weren't interested. They just wanted to watch yeah. it. Yeah, so it's really, really interesting, Meredith. So, I mean, this just shows you how difficult it can be. Uh, as you said, I mean, you get a video out and people watch it and you think, oh, this is great. But then when you say, oh, would you like, are you interested in purchasing one of the paintings? They're like, no, I just want to watch a video. So yeah. you go from having what looks like a fantastic result to no result at all. Right. So that, so learn from that mistake I made. <laughs> no, and um. <laughs> But, you know, the, the testing is involved. No one's going to yeah. hit it 100% of, like, of the time. Sure. So that could happen to you. But just know that we really think of what you're going to ask in the end of the person. To And so what we ended up doing for that artist is we did a whole video on what it means to own an original piece of artwork. She She's um, not... A, she, we were looking for first time buyers of original artwork. So we went there and, and so we didn't, it cost us more per view Then it's not too much more. It was costing us two to three cents a view, but I, I expected that. But then when we serve them the ad and invite them to buy one of these paintings, then um, I'm expecting better results. We'll see. So mm-hmm. just the rule that what I learned there was keep in mind, um, who, you know, what you want them to do in the end, but it, y'all, and some people, you know, like 
don't like to talk. I mean, I have had really good results with a TikTok for a chef who didn't want to talk. And she, we had her dancing around it. This was, this was like eight months ago when the mm-hmm. pointing hadn't gotten too like boring or mm-hmm. overused, but she was dancing around and pointing like you see. And, um, we had wonderful results. In fact, I have that case study on my website. If anyone wants to go th- read through on well, well, you'll share my website, but the case study yeah. on the chef's ad campaign is there. But um, anyway, so you create your video view campaign and this does a couple of things for you. I want you to use four different audiences. So demographics. So you're going to um, pick, pick different demographics different aspects of your ideal buyer or Mm -hmm. customer and put them in different um, ad sets. Meaning like for the chef, for instance, we bought, we had like um, young, young gym goers because she was kind of known on the gym circuit because she made and then we had moms in one ad set and everybody lived in Miami if you're selling to a city you'll see as you set up your campaign you can't use as many demographics the smaller your geography gets but if Mm -hmm. you're selling worldwide even you can get super specific um as far as like you could maybe do you know women that shop for Gucci like that could be you could test that audience with a video and so anyway you're gonna run the video. I suggest um, like four different demographics testing. So that means four different ad sets. I want you to spend $20 a day, maybe. So that's only $5 an ad set pretty quickly at two cents a view. Um, you'll get, uh, when you get to at least a thousand through plays or a thousand views, you should start to see, it might just be three days. It just depends on how you're doing three yeah. or four days. You're going to start to see one of those cold audiences um, way outperforming the other ones. Now, you might not. That's okay, too. But let's say that you do so that then you know which cold audience is working. Um, But the other thing that you um, that you will do is with that thousand. And this is what's key for iOS 14, which didn't. Which, which this is really important now mm-hmm. you're going to create a lookalike audience and right. um they the lookalike audiences have always been available but in what it is you guys is facebook will go you have to have a thousand views of the through play that's why we wait till we get there and then you just go in your audience manager and say you know these thousand people that watch this video go find two million you know you just go find other people in the United States that are just like them and they will find people very similar to them. Now, before iOS 14, we use lookalike audiences of people that visit your website, we visit right. your, your email list. We can't do that anymore with iOS 14 uh, because yeah, these yeah. people have opted out. So it stinks. The only lookalike audiences that you can try, but if it does, they don't work very well because if they've opted out, if you upload an email list of 2,000 people, to your Facebook manager and 1400 of them have opted out. They're only yeah. going to use the people left. So it's just not as reliable. But what I love about this video view, because Facebook can use all of that data because it, it's on, on app, you know, mm-hmm. so you create a lookalike audience of the video views. Now you have a really, I like to call that, that audience warmer. So your warm audience is the people that actually watched your video as well as your Instagram followers and your Facebook business followers, all those people are your warm, you know, and then your lookalike audience, I call them warmish. They're really cold. Right. They've never seen you before, but they're <laughs> warmish. Yeah. And then you've got a really great sense of what cold audiences are working for you. Now, um, sometimes they might all work similar, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. That just meant you did a really good job of nailing who your ideal customer was. And you found some, if, if you got one or two cents of view Mm -hmm. in your video, you know, and then these people convert later and they're all performing at a similar rate than all of them. I would keep using all four of this, but if you had, um, if you see that one, one or better, and I'd say 50% of the time I see one, a client have a great cold audience better than others. And 50%, they do kind of the same. So then you've got your warm, your warmish and your cold audiences now and we didn't have to go off app yeah. to do any of that then you kind of go with the strategy you might have used before like you'll then you serve them either an ad to sell them something like and you optimize for conversions or if you're um in the coaching world or you're selling some high ticket item you might offer like a freebie or a webinar 
uh, you, you know, you'd serve your, those three audiences, another ad, inviting them to join your webinar or take a freebie or something. Yeah, you know, it's fantastic what you've outlined, Meredith, because these, these are simple. I wouldn't say they're easy because you have to invest a bit some time and, and intelligence into it. But but what you've what you've laid out are very practical steps to be able to do this and and test it and make sure that you're investing in the right places and you're getting the right results. And I think and I love what you you've outlined here because I I think it really lays it out succinctly because let's face it we hate testing everybody knows you should do it but we hate doing this. But what you've laid out is it's hard to argue why you wouldn't do this. Yeah, I, it really is. It's um. Honestly, the video view campaigns, sometimes we spend like just another 200 or $300 at the beginning. Mm -hmm. It is so worth it, you guys, that that money. It's really money well spent to get your um, lookalike audience set up to kind of test which cold audiences are working. And also just to like to create a warm audience um, because meaning create people, they'll see you once now. These thousand people that watched they will have seen you before you ask them then to buy something from you. Mm -hmm. And what I just had, um, I have a friend, a colleague, really. Um, she has is a very successful tap dance teacher, and she right. sells a course for other tap dance teachers. And she um, is very successful with it. But she was she was dying, to be honest, like with the changes of Facebook ads, it really mm -hmm. affected her business. So one thing she tried was she retarget, she did a, she did, she has um launches. So she, her course is only open a few times a year and she um, invites people to a webinar usually to sell them her course, but she, um, because the targeting was all off and like usually course creators, they will, if you come to their webinar, but you don't buy, they're able to send you an ad. Mm -hmm, you didn't yeah. buy. That It's messed up now with iOS 14. You can't do that. But what she did was she sent an ad to the people that watched her video view straight, straight to them. They didn't even go to the webinar. <laughs> she just sent them, you know, it cost her a cent to find those people. And she sent them a sales page. Hey, come buy my thousand dollar course. And it worked shocked. Wow. It, 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 it saves her where she used to, you know, she was used to sending those uh, retargeting webinar ads. So it's yeah, a good yeah. strategy. No, it's a great strategy. Uh, listen, um, we're bumping up against the end of our time, but listen, Meredith, this was fantastic. Such fantastic advice in here. And especially for those of you who are struggling with Facebook and Instagram or you're trying to, or you, or they sound like the right channel for you, but you haven't, you don't know where to start or how to start. I would absolutely encourage you to check out uh, Meredith and the work she does, because uh, we've outlined some fantastic strategies here. All of Meredith's information is going to be below this video and, and links to her website. Uh, but before and we John, go, Meredith, me, please yeah. tell people a little bit more about you, yourself and what you do. Oh, and I'm sorry to jump in, but I got excited because oh. I didn't want to forget to tell you that I did create a freebie for, for your audience um, there because these iOS 14 changes seem overwhelming and scary, mm -hmm. especially if you've just dabbled a little bit with Facebook ads and now you're like, now what? So I created a really short eight point checklist of really must do changes or items to be, um, to make sure your ads work with iOS 14. So I'd love for y'all, you all to come get that. And it's at meredithcallaher.com slash sales pop. Um, that you Excellent. Put together. Yeah. And you, and otherwise I just, I uh, work with business owners to create and implement their Facebook and Instagram ad strategies. And I love to talk to any of your listeners about their business on my website. They could book a free call and we can just chat and I can hear about their goals and see if ads would work for their business or not. And then we can make perfect. A yeah. Yeah, listen, that's great. And listen, thank you so much, Meredith, for joining us today and for offering those great insights and advice and the freebie giveaway, as I said, it'll be below the video. Uh, I, I really do believe that it is critical to get expert help on these things because I've seen it myself firsthand. I've seen people you know, lose, or say, invest a lot of money in, in ad campaigns and then just not understand why they don't get the return on it. So it's not that simple. It's here, you, know, you have to keep up with, uh, OS changes, you have to keep up with algorithm changes, you have to keep up with all these changes. And so I highly encourage you go find an expert and save you a lot of pain, effort, and money. <laughs> I like that advice. Uh, Thanks.
<laughs> all right. Uh, thank you. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. See you all again soon. Thank you.